Savage Finance. Because it's a jungle out there that wants your money. Here I will teach you how to manage the jungle and make it out. Welcome to another edition of Savage Finance. Today's topic is how much money should you save? There's a big, big question. So I'm gonna give you some guidelines because there's videos on YouTube that are saying savers or losers and that you shouldn't save any money, you should invest all your money. I don't think that's necessarily true. I feel that you should have a certain amount in savings before you begin in investing and we're gonna talk about that in this video. If this is your first time here, what I want you to do is to go to the beginning of the channel and to watch the older video so you can get your financial education. This will be very helpful with you managing your money, your credit and finances, because this is personal finance that your mom and dad never had. All right, let's say you're out there and you're, you're getting into personal finance and you want some numbers. How much money should I save? And I'm gonna give you some critical guidelines. Here at Savage Finance, we preach that you should have a long-term emergency fund, a short-term emergency fund, and a family operating account. Now, what I want you to do is to take your income, divide it by half, whatever that is, and that should be your long-term emergency fund. And then your short-term emergency fund should be about $5,000. Now, why should you have these two short, these two emergency funds? All right, your long-term emergency fund is for pandemics. It's for extracurricular, it's crazy stuff. Maybe someone had a heart attack, maybe someone got sick. This is for big boy things, and you don't ever wanna touch it. Now, your short-term emergency fund is for like car repairs, uh, little things that happen. Maybe you have to fly to a funeral or something. That's what your short-term emergency fund is. And your family operating account, which should be two months of expenses, so you could pay your bills at the first of the month versus waiting to get paid to pay your bills. Now, there's a lot of talk and conversations here on YouTube about you should not save your money, you should invest your money. You should have your short-term and long-term emergency fund funded before you begin investing. And another thing that you need to have is to be as close to debt-free as possible before you begin investing. Now, this is a very controversial topic. There are many people who want to have a lot of debt, but they still want to dibble and dabble in the stock market or have some investments. Let me explain to you why you want to have these two emergency funds funded before you begin investing. Let's say your name is Clarence. Clarence, you're out there throwing money in the stock market. You're out there spreading your money. But Clarence, you have a car payment. Clarence, you have credit card debt. Clarence, you have student loan debt. So your monthly payments are fourteen dollars to $2,000 a month just paying for that stuff as well as your living expenses. Now, this only leaves a little bit of money to invest, two to 300 bucks. So you've got, you know, X amount of dollars going to your 401k, maybe 150, then you got another 150 in the stock market. So you're only investing 300 bucks per month, which is $3,600 per year. But that car payment you have, Clarence, you just got this car, you're gonna pay six to eight thousand dollars in interest on the first few years of that car payment so that's going to eradicate any investment gains you get like once again people dive into the math men lie women lie math does not lie so you because you have these obligations over here your investment efforts are not going to be that good and the outcomes are not going to be that good so this is why you want to be debt free and also have your emergency funds funded. Now, I know you're like, well, Glendon, my emergency funds, why do I need to have my emergency funds funded before I start investing? Great question, I'm about to tell you the answer. Let's say, Clarence, you've followed this channel, you came across the channel two years in the future, you're out of debt, you've got your emergency fund, you got your short-term fund, you even got your family operating account funded. And now you wanna get into investing. Now that $1,400 to $2,000 that you were paying in bills, 
now that money plus the 20 to 300 dollars you can now invest two to twenty five hundred dollars per month wow so that's going to be twenty five thousand to three thirty thousand dollars a year so your investment portfolio is going to grow rapidly you're going to see all kinds of gains now clarence let's say you're investing money you got money in the stock market that's doing well then you have an accident on the job where you have to miss work for two months no problem you've got that long-term emergency fund. So you got the money to pay your bills while you sitting at home chilling and your investments remain undisturbed because you're not working or maybe you're getting workers comp or some kind of unemployment benefits. Maybe you can continue to invest depending upon your situation, but your investments remain untouched because you have cash money that you're able to live on, Clarence. That's why you do it this way. This is, we're all about building firm economic houses here, Clarence. And this is the savings accounts because there's so much garbage out there that you shouldn't save money, that your money should be working. Let me give you the math. Inflation's are roughly 1.5 to 2% a year. So let's say you had $100,000 in the bank, Clarence. You know how many years? It, it would literally take 12 to 15 years for you to notice and you would only notice a little bit the reduction in spending power of that 100 grand, 12 to 15 years. Let's say you have $100,000 in the bank. After one year, you now have $98,000 in the bank based upon the depreciation of the currency. And then you go two years and you have 96,000. So it, the money doesn't disappear that much. And also from a mental perspective, Having money saved for a rainy day gives you attitude. Oh, I'm good, I can handle this. I don't really care what happens with the economy. I don't care what happens with my job because I'm Clarence and I got my money together. This is building bulletproof financial portfolios because once you have your long-term emergency fund, you have your short-term emergency fund, then you have a family operating account. Man, you are cooking with gas. And also, something else that's gonna happen once you begin to manage your money this way. Once you start managing your money appropriately, you're gonna develop better savings habits. You're gonna develop better financial discipline. So you're gonna be in a really good position for the future. One of the things that I want you to understand is money management is not rocket science hard. It's hard because people don't want to deploy any discipline. They want to spend their check, live paycheck to paycheck, save no money, live on credit. And these things as exposed right now are really, really bad because they put you in a bad, bad situation. They put you in a position where you're gonna be on the struggle bus. So this is how much money you should save and you should practice. And once again, once you get your savings accounts built up, you can move that money from your savings account or checking account into a money market fund. Or if you have an appetite for risk, you can put that money in the market. You can actually put you know, have a separate portfolio, maybe you get a Webull app or something like that and have that money segmented in a, another fund in very low risk investments so the money grows and you still have access to it because you can sell a stock and get cash just like that. Stocks are really, really liquid. But once again, you gotta get the money. You gotta save the money. You gotta build the accounts. You gotta put the money away. You gotta build your financial house correctly. This is one of the things. So this is how much money you should save. It's all based upon how much money you make and the expenses that you have. So one of the things that is really perplexing to many, many people is where am I in comparison to your neighbors? And I should say, you shouldn't worry about that. You should worry about your own financial house. You should worry about putting money away for you. You should not worry about your neighbors. You should not worry about what's going on with your friends and families. You should be 100% focused on your personal finances. Also, to help you out with your personal finances, I have a course, 30 days to 2,500. It's free, the link is below. And I also have another course, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success, links below. 
get these two courses and start building additional streams of income because this is going to be really important for you building your proper financial house as fast as possible so those are two gifts from me to you and if you can afford it if you're in the position you can afford it go below and get my money management course this course will literally teach you how to organize your finances in, in a way that will literally blow your mind. So with that, check out this next video and I will see you guys next time.